When you can buy a great phone for $600 or less, one of the few things that might actually tempt you towards a four-figure flagship is this, the camera. Even as other areas of smartphone tech have plateaued, having the best camera in your pocket remains a big deal. Some phone cameras have superhuman night vision, others impress us with ultra-wide and telephoto options, or beautiful computational portraits. With the P30 Pro, Huawei is aiming for all of the above. And if you are about to drop close to a thousand euros on this phone, chances are these cameras are no small part of the reason why. But before we dig into what makes the P30 Pro special as a camera, let's talk about how it fares as a phone. If you've seen our Mate 20 Pro coverage, you'll have a good grounding of what to expect here. Nevertheless, the P30 Pro is a lot more than just a tweaked version of that handset. With a 6.47 inch screen diagonal, this is a big chunk of a phone, even accounting for its slim proportions and minimal bezels. Something to call out straight away is that Huawei has absolutely nailed the colour options this year. Unless you're that one guy with the boring black model, you're getting a distinctly beautiful phone here. I've spent most of my time with the eye-catching Amber Sunrise version of the P30 Pro, but my favourite colour has to be the breathing crystal model you see here. It's got a gorgeous sky blue gradient with an iridescent shift to a fiery yellow orange, and it looks stunning. The outer frame has this flattened top and bottom to it, a neat design touch that I suspect also makes it less slippery in the hand, but there's still no 3.5mm headphone jack for whatever that's worth. Around the front, it's pretty much all screen, save for a tiny bit of a chin down below and a dewdrop notch up top. The display is only a 1080p panel, which is below the Quad HD standard for most flagship phones. I can't say I can tell the difference though, particularly unless I really go looking for it. In every other way that matters, this is a great looking screen, with daylight visibility close to Samsung's best. And if you look up top, you'll notice there's no earpiece speaker to be found. That's because the display itself now vibrates to generate sound for phone calls. I was sceptical at first about how well this would work, but in reality I found it was perfectly usable, though calls did sound a little bit tinnier than in devices with a traditional earpiece speaker. Like the Mate 20 Pro, the P30 Pro's fingerprint scanner lives in the display, but it's an updated component and works a lot better than the older model. It's faster, more accurate and less fiddly than last year's in-screen fingerprint tech, and for me it's been more reliable to use even than the Galaxy S10's ultrasonic fingerprint scanner. There's also face unlock, but because of the need for a smaller notch in this phone, it's a less secure version using just the front camera. I found it works just fine though, even in reasonably dark conditions. On the inside, Huawei's new flagship is a modest upgrade from the Mate 20 series of last year. It's using the company's 7nm Kirin 980 chipset, a proven speedy performer, and it's backed up by 8 gigs of RAM and 128, 256 or 512 gigabytes of storage. Other staples of the Mate 20 Pro have made it across the P30 Pro as well, IP68 water resistance, super fast 40 watt charging and wireless charging, plus reverse wireless charging. The battery spec has also remained unchanged at 4200 mAh, and that number isn't just impressive on paper, it's also liberated me from battery anxiety from the past couple of weeks with this phone almost entirely. The only way I could reliably get into the danger zone before the end of the evening was with constant camera use on busy travel days. That's true of most phones, but the difference seemed more pronounced on the P30 Pro. At least when you do run low on juice, the 40 watt charger can get you back past the 50% mark faster than almost anything else. All of that makes the P30 Pro a pretty good phone, but what really differentiates it is its uniquely capable quad camera setup. Let's quickly recap the specs to begin with. Huawei has a 40 megapixel main sensor with a new RYYB subpixel setup that's red, yellow, yellow, blue, replacing the standard RGB setup to capture more light. That's behind an f1.6 lens with optical stabilization. There's the ultra wide camera we know from the Mate 20, and most impressive of all, an 8 megapixel 5x telephoto camera using a new internal periscope to fit in all the optics. The fourth camera hiding around the back there is a time of flight sensor for more accurate depth detection in portrait and bokeh shots. So this whole setup gives you a ton of versatility in the photos you can take. In fact, the telephoto can zoom all the way up to 10x without losing detail using a hybrid zoom mode that combines the 5x zoom with the 40 megapixel main sensor. In everyday general photography, you'll mostly be using the main sensor, which is by far the best of the three in terms of dynamic range and low light performance. It's safe to say it's up there with the Pixel 3 in both of those areas. In fact, full auto on the P30 Pro is so good in low light that I haven't felt the need to use the dedicated low light mode anywhere near as much as I did on the P20 and Mate 20 last year. But when you do use it, prepare to be impressed. Seriously impressed. 
The P30 Pro's night mode leapfrogs the Pixel 3's night sight to capture more colour and more detail than your eye can see. This phone, without a doubt, is the new king of low-light photography, an order of magnitude better than most other flagship cameras. But even when you're not shooting in the dark, the improved optics and processing in the P30 Pro's cameras make it a joy to use. The AI Master Scene Detection Mode is back, though now disabled by default. I can't say I've missed it all that much, though, since everything this phone does look so great on full auto. There's also a new AI HDR feature that helps keep all parts of an image evenly exposed, for example, backlit portraits or selfies. And portraits in general have really impressed me on this phone, likely thanks to the new fourth camera, that new TOF sensor, to help out with edge detection. Selfies, too, from the 32 megapixel front camera have really surprised me with how well they hold up, even in darker conditions. Though, unfortunately, you can't use night mode with the front camera like you can on the Google Pixel 3. The ultra-wide camera, unchanged on the hardware side from the Mate 20 Pro, lets you capture more dramatic-looking shots of scenery or everyday scenes. And although it's weaker than the main camera in darker conditions, it works really well when paired with the handheld night mode. At the other end of the spectrum, there's of course the new 5x telephoto camera which I've been extremely impressed by, with a few caveats. First, yes, this really is 5x optical zoom, and it really does work all the way up to 10x in hybrid mode. Actually, having usable 10x zoom on a phone kind of forces you to rethink the way you can take photos, because it opens up so many new possibilities. I mean, just look at the range of shots you can take here. From all the way out in ultra-wide mode to a super long shot off in the distance. In 5x and 10x modes, I've gotten consistently great shots out of the P30 Pro, though I did notice autofocus becoming a little slow and wonky compared to the other two cameras. Also, yes, in theory you can go all the way up to 50x a digital zoom, but just don't. It looks bad. There are other potential pitfalls too with such a long telephoto camera in a phone. Firstly, for some shots, 5x zoom is just too long. There's an awkward area of weakness between around 3x and 4.9x zoom that means you're still looking at a digital crop of the main sensor, and that means fine detail and colour suffer until you hit that magic 5x mark and switch over to the dedicated telephoto. I'm not really sure what the solution to this might be besides adding yet another camera. Also, the telephoto is just not great in general in low light. At night, you're going to get dark, soft-looking images that are just nowhere near as clear as what the main sensor can deliver. In fact, in very dark conditions, the P30 Pro does switch back to a digital crop of the main sensor, but that's bad in a different way, since you're looking at a pure digital zoom at 5x, which even at 40 megapixels looks rough. I guess my main criticism with the P30 Pro in stills is that you get all this versatility with these four cameras, but at the same time it's executed in a way that is inherently restrictive. The main sensor is superlative in low light, which only serves to highlight the weakness of the telephoto, and to a lesser extent the wide angle, in much darker conditions. The telephoto is phenomenal in good or moderate light, but in the dark you have to deal with a nasty digital crop of the main sensor. At the same time, for moderate zoom at around 3x, the P30 Pro is arguably weaker than the standard P30, which has the same 3x optical zoom module from last year's Huawei flagships. I want to talk a little bit about video before we move on, because that was one big area of weakness for last year's Huawei phones, and this year there's been some serious improvement across the board. AI stabilization now works reliably across all three rear cameras, there are no frame rate dips when shooting with the ultra-wide camera, and although you do need a steady hand, the 5x telephoto works really well in video mode, combining the optical and AI stabilization. Huawei has improved its low-light video processing too, works pretty well, though shots with a lot of movement will still produce slightly juddery images, and at the same time a lot of my criticisms with the telephoto in low-light also apply to video. When you're shooting in the dark, you're going to want to use the main sensor exclusively since video rapidly becomes grainy on the other two. So the P30 Pro's cameras aren't magic, there are limits to what it can do and in what conditions. There is a learning curve involved in a way that there isn't with, say, a Pixel or an iPhone, but if you do put in the time to learn these cameras, the results are really rewarding. Let's round off by talking software, which has traditionally been not great in Huawei phones. And as a fairly minor point release, EMUI 9.1 doesn't change things up dramatically. That said, there are extra minor bits of polish that do make it more enjoyable, or perhaps just less objectionable. 
Some animations like the recent app switcher have been improved. UI scaling is more consistent, everything isn't gigantic by default. Plus Huawei is now doing icon borders properly in its launcher, a minor improvement but the mix of circles and squares before was kinda jarring. What this doesn't change is the generally over-engineered feel of EMUI, the many slightly irritating ways it copies iOS like hiding notifications on a lock screen unless they're new since the last time you unlocked the phone. In fact, lock screen notifications in general are handled in a bit of a confusing way. That said, these baby steps of progress are welcome, and I've been mostly fine with Huawei's software in my time with the P30. I've used a lot of Huawei phones over the years though, so if you're coming in fresh then maybe prepare for some weirdness as you settle in. None of the P30 Pro's software quirks are enough to stop me enthusiastically recommending this device though. It nails the basics of what makes a great overall phone, the way it looks, the way it performs, the battery life, and it justifies the hefty price tag by offering the best and most versatile camera in a smartphone, though perhaps one with a steeper learning curve than most of the competition. That's it for now on what might well be the best smartphone camera of 2019. Stay tuned and subscribe for more reviews like this one and hit the comments let us know what you think of the P30 Pro. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.